We're joined by Rick Croy, head men's basketball coach at California Baptist. Uh, coach, can you tell us about your team and your expectations for the season? Yeah, we've uh, we've got a little bit of everything on our team. We've got a strong core of returners, Dejon Davis, uh, Ty Rao, Bull Qual, and Jordan Heading, who all had really good seasons for us last year in the Pac West Conference. We've got a, a JC transfer coming in from Citrus College, Jeremy Smith, that we think is going to really help us. Uh, we've got a few players that redshirted last year that were Division I transfers, Mike Henn from UC Davis, Jeremy Lieberman from the University of Wyoming, Zach Parag from the Nebraska Omaha, and then we've got a freshman uh, from, from Australia, Glenn Morrison, that we think can really help as well. So a little bit of everything um, in terms of coming back and coming in. Uh, we really like the way our team's been training and practicing so far this season. Uh, we're excited to compete. Uh, I think our our non-conference schedule, uh, we are, it's pretty treacherous early. We're on the road quite a bit in November, but we, we think it'll prepare us well for the WAC travel. You returned Jordan Heading, who is a two-time all-conference performer that averaged 14.3 points a game last year and has some international experience. Can you tell us more about Jordan? Yeah, Jordan... Jordan's a great story. He's gotten better every year he's been with us, and his role has grown each and every year. Last year, we were really counting on him to score the basketball, and our point guard, uh, Marquise Mosley, who's also returning this year, tore his ACL the second game of the year. And we inserted him into the point guard position, and he struggled early getting his legs underneath him and shot the ball very poorly to start the year. And about halfway through the year, found his rhythm and really was one of the best Division II players in the country uh, towards the end of the year. He's a great leader on our campus, a uh, great leader in our locker room, um, really carries the spirit of our team very well. So uh, the timing of this transition of the WAC is great for him. It's a, it's a new challenge and, and really a great opportunity as the captain of our team. Uh, you mentioned him a little bit. Uh, you have a couple of Division One transfers, including Jeremy Lieberman, who won a CBI championship with Wyoming. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about those Division One transfers and what it means having some players with D1 experience? Yeah, I think Jeremy's an example um, of a guy that's fearless. You know, I, these guys transferred into our school knowing um, that we were going to be making this move into the WAC and, and also knowing that that there were going to be some provisions in place um, in, in terms of being able to play in the conference tournament and things like that. But they, they chose CBU. Uh, they've worked extremely hard since they've been with us. Uh, they bring some strong experience. They all played in good programs. UC Davis was also a tournament team that Mike Henn played on. Uh, Nebraska Omaha had a number of good wins when Zach was there. And Zach had a number of starts. So they bring some experience. And at the same time, they were able to get some reps as Lancers under their belt last year and learn our system, learn our culture. Uh, so we're really looking forward to stepping into this with them. Uh, this question comes from Twitter user Gabe Leadley. Given your previous Division I experience, is there anything specific you've done to prepare your program and players for the transition? You know, I think we've tried to always focus on the process, uh, but I think even more so, that's even more important now. You know, we we don't know, we don't we haven't been through, you know, we haven't been to Rio Grande, we haven't been on a trip to Utah Valley, and I think any time you've played in a conference, as we did in the Pac West for some years, our staffs had great continuity. You start to know what to expect. You know what those scouts look like. We don't know that stepping into this. We have great respect for the programs in this conference. We know. There's been a tremendous commitment uh, from our commissioner uh, to the other head men's basketball coaches in our conference and, and the presence in this conference to men's basketball. So we know uh, we're stepping into a great college basketball conference. We know it's going to be tough, uh, but we're really talking a lot about the challenge, the opportunity, the process, getting better every day. And we've really, uh, you know, a simple goal of trying to be one of the programs you know, one of the few programs in the country that continues to improve throughout the season. It's such a long season. It's hard to get better the entire way. And one of our goals is simply to be playing our best basketball uh, in the end, in March. You boast a 79-7 and record at home. Talk about what it's like to have that kind of home court advantage. Yeah, uh, some of that record, uh, the 79-7, and was in Van Dyne Gym, our old gym, uh, smaller campus um, on the CBU campus and now uh, 
this past year, we opened the CBU Event Center. It's a tremendous home floor. I think we did a lot of work in the community last year to build that up, and I think that's that's so important. We know that, that road play uh, in the WAC is difficult, and you've got to be able to build up your home floor, and I think we've got – We've got a lot of synergy. We've got our students behind us. Um, we've got our, our community behind us. We've got our alumni behind us. And, and we know you have to be able to win on, on your home floor. And the CBU Event Center is a great place to play. Uh, it's an absolutely fabulous facility, and, and we're excited to represent. Your program made five straight NCAA Division II appearances, uh, the longest postseason streak in the West Region, and had the best winning percentage of any West Region team. How do you think that success will translate uh, to the Division I level? Well, I think the competitive, competitiveness that our program brings, uh, one of the things that we try and focus on is, is being emotionally ready to compete each night. And we think that's really, really important. We prided ourselves over the last few years on, on making sure we're ready to go every night. That's, that's players, coaches, managers, everyone totally united. And I think that when that's your culture, uh, you, you bring that, you try and bring those same things to whatever conference you're competing in. Uh, this question comes from Twitter user at Elliot Jamar. What is your team hashtag or motto and what does it mean? Our mantra this year is fearless. And I think our seniors, Jordan Heading, Jeremy Lieberman, they, they represent that very well. We want the rest of the team to do that. We want to build our locker room uh, and the spirit with which we compete and represent CBU uh, around that, fearless. We've, uh, it's been a fearless journey from CBU, going from NAI to Division II uh, into the WAC in Division I. And, and that's really led by – our president, Dr. Ellis, our, our vice president, Kent Dacus, our athletic director, Micah Parker, they're fearless competitors. Uh, and we want to step into that. Uh, and not it's, it's not always about the scoreboard being our God. It's, it's trying to win on all fronts academically in the community, uh, really demonstrate uh, great role modeling in the community with our guys. And so there, there's a lot, of, a lot of different ways that fearless can be played out. You were picked to finish eighth in the WAC by both the coaches and the media. Talk about those predictions. Yeah, I think, you know, preseason predictions are, are always interesting. I know when when I came from St. Mary's College and was fortunate enough to be hired at CBU, we were picked sixth. Uh, and the reality of it is no one really knew how we played, and we didn't really know how anyone else played. And, and I think that's the same here. Um, I think – we're stepping into uh, the whack at a time where, where men's basketball is thriving. So uh, I think there's so many teams that, that were picked above us that have returning players that people are comfortable with. They have systems of play that are in place that other people know. So um, I think being picked eighth is, uh, was about what we thought, about where we thought we would be picked. But it really is like in complete contrast to our our fearless mantra, which it doesn't have a lot to do with predictions. It has to do with how we work together each day and, and how we attack this opportunity. Grand Canyon recently completed the transition from Division Two to Division One, and it has had great success in the WAC. Have you paid attention to what Coach Marley has done with this program, and do you think there's anything to learn from him? Yeah, there's there's a lot to learn. They've they've done it well on on so many fronts. Uh, not just competitively on the floor, but off the floor with the way they've marketed their program and, and the way they've built their brand and their following. And um, they, they've definitely, I think, given everyone confidence uh, that you can make the move and, and, and make it well and, and build a, a strong following right away. And, and we tried to do some of that even last year. You know, we had great attendance uh, even, even in the Pac West Conference. Um, and we want to continue to build on that. I think the CBU Event Center puts us in a position to do that and the strong support that we have from our administration, I think, um, kind of mirrors what Grand Canyon has in terms of total alignment. Uh, but Grand Canyon, uh, they've been fearless. You know, when I look back and, and I was kind of keeping an eye on them from afar, um, they took some transfers early, some freshmen early, um, some of them worked out, some of them didn't. Uh, when they needed to hit the reset, and bu reset button in a few areas, they were fearless in doing so. And they've just been so competitive. Their staff's been united. They've been well prepared every game. I think they've done a, a, a tremendous job 
uh, of scouting opponents and those kinds of things. So, yeah, there's a ton to be learned and, and a lot of confidence to be gained uh, on a tough journey. Can you tell us a little bit about your coaching staff? Yeah, our coaching staff is um, um, it's unique. It's, um, I'm, I'm proud to talk about them because it's, uh, it's a journey different than most, uh, I think, at this level. We all coach together at the junior college level uh, at Citrus College. Uh, we were competing in the California Community College Basketball Association, and we had a lot of success. We, we, we made a lot of our fair share of mistakes, but we were able to learn from those uh, without a lot of eyes on us, and we were just kind of learning on the fly and, um, and, and learning by doing. And we knew that to get an opportunity like this, we probably had to go our separate ways. And uh, I went up to St. Mary's College and had the opportunity to work for Randy Bennett uh, and compete in the West Coast Conference and, and learned a ton. Um, Hardy Espria, who's our, our assistant head coach, uh, went to Humboldt State and then Cal State Fullerton. Josh Dene, who's our director of operations, went to Cal State San Marcos. And then Doc Wellman, another one of our assistants, stayed at Citrus College. And then Jeff McIntosh uh, played for us his final year, his senior year at CBU, and now we're all together. And we've got a lot of continuity, uh, a lot of enthusiasm, and a really, really strong brotherhood. And I think, I think that helps shape our locker room and, and really the unification of our team. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.